Hi, welcome to a short video on teaching with the Lemons Market Experiment in my Econ Lab. The Lemons Market Experiment is one of the suite of experiments housed in my Econ Lab, and this is the experiment that reproduces uh, Akerlof's classic Lemons Market um, asymmetric information uh, study. So the idea really here is to show that information information flows, asymmetric information, really affects how markets perform and also identifies ways in which markets and society have tried to deal with this asymmetric information problem. So it's the classic akerlof lemons market. In the, in the lemons market, we have two types of lemons markets. We have the single player game and the multiplayer game. In the single player game, students are going to be run through not only the full information scenario, but all of the other scenarios, the asymmetric information, warranty, Lemon's Law, reputation scenario, right? And we kind of expect to see the classic sort of results. In the multiplayer game, you're playing with all of your students, right? We might not see all the stuff that we would see in a kind of cla in the in the single player uh, setup because we know the single players are playing with virtual players that have been essentially trained to get the results we want. So remember, there's always a trade-off between doing the single player and the multiplayer version. In a second, we'll show you the setup for the multiplayer version, but just kind of remember what's going on here. The instructor gets to control the name or the of the experiment and any sort of additional instructions. You control what type of scenarios, what type of environment the students are going to perform in, right? Full information, asymmetric information, when there's a warranty in place, where there's a lemon law or a customer protection law in place, and then also reputation. And the nice thing too is you can actually change the order in which these scenarios occur. You control the number of duration and the number of rounds, and you control whether chat's possible. Now remember, the reputation round is really to kind of simulate an online auction site where you look and sellers get thumbs up, get thumbs down, or get confidence rating or sales rating based on previous buyers experience with that particular seller and the idea really here is to show you that you know even small hits to reputation might have a big effect on a individual's ability to sell in the market now unlike the other scenarios students are unaware of the number of rounds in the reputation because clearly what we know is that in the last round everybody would deviate Right? Sellers would advertise a high quality but sell low quality good. And so the idea there is if they know the last round, they would deviate. And of course, if you know the last round you're going to deviate, then everybody's going to try to deviate the round before. And essentially, this would backward induct and unravel to the point where we'd see deviation right away. So in order to avoid this sort of problem, students are unaware of the number of rounds in the reputation game. Let's go take a look now at the setup screen. This is the setup screen for the multiplayer game, right? These are the directions, right? Full information, buyer and seller know everything. Asymmetric information, only the seller knows the quality of the used TV. In the warranty round, the seller has the option to include a warranty. And of course, Lemon Law protection, we see those sorts of things in automobiles and many other places, right? So we can see where that's often very obvious for, for what's going on here. Okay. So we've got the default settings. What we want to do is look at the settings screen. The professor can change the experiment title, customize the instructions, just like all the other experiments. You can control which rounds you want to, to do. You can also say, I want to change the order. Okay. You control the duration, the rounds per scenario, how you identify, right? Once again, there's always this information difference between students know IDs versus other people's names. And then, of course, we see some sort of ability to collude through the chat or whatnot. So very, very standard setup compared to all the rest of the experiments in the suite. Once the experiment's been run, we want to take a look at the experiment results tabs and discuss some of the things that you'll see in these results tabs. Unlike the other experiments, you see two different sets of results tab here. The Your Results tab is going to show the student each individual transaction for all of the treatment rounds. So they're going to be able to see exactly what they've done, when they did it, be able to look at total gains, etc. 
So we're not going to spend too much time on this. We are going to spend most of our time on the overall results from the experiment, kind of the classic sort of results that we want to look at in terms of market behavior. So the first one of these results tabs for market behavior is to show the actual transaction tabs. And so each transaction is going to be viewed with an H if that was a high quality goods sold and an L if that was a low quality goods sold. So really what we want to look at is where the high and low quality goods are sold at in terms of price. And the idea really here in the full information game is that we should be seeing high quality goods sold for high prices, low quality goods for low prices. Remember, students gain by buying the good for lower than their willingness to pay. So they students still gain if they buy a low quality good as long as they pay a low quality price, right, or the lower price. So essentially, we, under the full information game, we should see a separating equilibrium. High quality goods sold high quality price, low quality goods sold for low quality price. In the asymmetric game, we should see then essentially that there's a problem here. This is where sellers can sell the low quality good for a high price. And what we want to talk about with our students essentially is what happened in terms of the number of high quality goods sold and also what happened to the price of these goods. Right. So the idea is what happens when we change information. And let's take a look. So like I said, there's two results tabs. The first is your results, right? This shows the students what they've done in all of the rounds, right? And then we go to the main results tabs. And here, if you take a look at it, this is a two round set of full information game. And what you can see here is essentially a lot of H's. This is round one. Okay, and in fact, there's no low quality actually sold. Now, that's not necessarily always what's going to happen. A lot of times, what we'll see here is low quality be sold here. But you've got the two different willingnesses to pay, right? And so the idea here is we really should see, right, separating equilibrium. And look at the number, right? The number of transactions that take in place. But now, as we change from the full information to the asymmetric information, look what we see here. We see a creeping in of low quality goods, and we see low quality goods being sold for a high price. Clearly here, there's a case where consumers are going to lose, right? They've been burned. They paid a high quality price and got a low quality product, right? And look, actually here, we see no high quality goods sold. So some of the students recognize what's going on and say, I'm not going to buy high quality price because I don't know what the what I'm actually getting here with this asymmetric information. and so. The idea with the asymmetric information treatment is that not only do we see a smaller number of transactions taking place, but we actually see some students getting burned and we see high quality goods being driven out of the market because these low quality sellers can essentially price their low quality goods at a high price. Students are getting, are getting leery of that and are stopping to buy. So then when we go to a warranty game, right? Where sellers are allowed to put a warranty on their good, clearly the presence of a warranty is a signal. And look what we see here. We see high quality goods being sold again for high quality price, low quality goods being sold for a low quality price. We're back to that, you know, mimicking that full information sort of game. So the purpose of the warranty is bringing back the high quality goods. And you can see the little asterisk here is indicates that that good, that high quality good, was sold with a warranty. Okay, and if you compare it to the full information screen, look what we see here. We see virtual replication, right? Okay, high quality goods in pink around uh, the full information, the warranty game, the, the H's are in blue, and we see the same sort of thing. So the purpose of the warranty obviously is to try and bring back that full information. Now if we add in the Lemon's Law, Right, we'll get rid of the warranty here. You see roughly the same sort of thing. Okay, separating equilibrium, high quality goods introduced. So we know in reality that right, we know in reality that as I switch back to the the PowerPoint here, we know that in reality that the warranty and the Lemon's Law essentially are designed to alleviate the asymmetric information problem and bring us back to as close to full information as possible. Full information obviously doesn't exist in reality, 
but it's a great kind of goal here in terms of market efficiency. And the reason why we have warranties, lemon laws, are to try and get us back to, as close as we can, the resolution of the asymmetric information problem back to full information. Now the reputation rounds, again, are designed to mimic online auctions. And really the idea is to show that what happens when a seller gets a thumbs down. Are they able to sell high quality good anymore? Are they able to sell any sort of goods at all? So really this idea is does reputation matter, especially in a repeated game. In a one shot game, no reputation, not gonna matter. But as repeated game starts to go on, students learn from previous students experience with that seller and do we see that reputations really do matter here we can see the actual rounds of the reputation right we saw high quality being goods being sold high quality then all of a sudden we start to see some low quality goods being sold obviously these people are going to get a bad reputation and the idea here is that as you move along only sellers with high quality reputations are going to be able to sell high quality goods and sellers with low quality reputations right they got those thumbs down are only going to be able to sell low quality goods so we get at a little bit of a separating equilibrium again when you look at the effects right we can look essentially at the, the sellers that have good reputation points are typically able to sell high quality goods right Okay, and more of them, and those with bad reputation points are going to be limited to the amount that they can sell, but also are going to be essentially relegated to selling only low quality. So reputations matter. So the last results tab talks about putting it all together. And really what this does is show students everything that they've worked through and really kind of gets at this idea of the importance of information, the importance of asymmetric information in a market, right? The idea that both the number of high quality goods, right, and the quantity of high quality goods, you know, that really de declines over time, right, when you change to asymmetric information. We start to see the H's disappear and more L's, right, including the warranties and the Lemons Law. Do they work? Do they work in the experiment? You can ask students, do you think they work in reality, right? Where do we see these lemon laws and these warranty laws in effect, right? We see more and more used cars now, including warranties, right? Something we used to not see in that particular market. Why do we see these sorts of things, right? What do we know about electronics? What types of goods have warranties and lemon laws? What types of goods don't? Do you think they work? It's a really important kind of discussion of the role of information in in a market. And then obviously a lot of our students have bought online and this idea, do they pay attention to those seller ratings? Do we see a lot of sellers on these online auction houses that have low ratings or have they essentially disappeared? Right? So we can talk a lot about these sorts of things in a very repeated game sort of way. And then one last thing before we go here, here's the total slide and you can see the different rounds. You can see the number of total sold, high quality sold. We clearly see asymmetric information that high quality disappears, but in all the other games, high quality reappears, right? This idea that we can really sort of see a change um, and we see, clearly see a drop in the number of sold, more low quality as information. So once again, this big information story. And just like all the other experiments, you can not only print out the screens, but you can actually export results, right? Both CSV files and then Excel files with pre-created graphs. So this is, once again, a great way to bring these results back into your classroom, a great way to take the results and create custom questions to put in homeworks or quizzes afterwards to really kind of bring the experiment back into the classroom so students see that what they're doing really matters. So it's a great, great experiment to really show the Lemons Market Akerlof story um, for students. Uh, thanks for listening.